Hello friends, this is Ryan Hicks with TalkToProfit.com. I had a question about sourcing inventory for Amazon and eBay and fees and what's a good price to buy things for. And I'm going to show you an example. This is a book listing. This seller is selling a Gaylord of books, which is about 800 books or so, depending on the size of the book. And I think the books were about $300 and you had to pay shipping, which probably run you 400 maybe. Just depends on who you choose and where you're located. Anyway, so you have about $600 to $800 invested in it. So roughly about 75 cents a book, maybe up to a dollar a book, depending on how many books are in there. Here's the problem. This is one of the images in their listing. Now, I don't know anything about this individual seller. They may be great and they may be doing very well. I can only go by the numbers. And this shows in one month's time, they had $22,556.20 in sales. That sounds great. Until you see this number. Average sales per item, per order, it's only one item average, $5.44. This, my friends, is red flags should be flying. Now, the listing says these are not cherry picked, these are for FBA, but you have to presume that to be the case. I don't know. I've bought trailers full of books myself. You go through them all and then you get rid of the stuff that's not worth anything. Because there are people that want them for whatever reason. They sell penny books and they think they can make a little bit of money on that. Normally they can't. Or they have a bookstore, they want to furnish a bunch of used books in there. There may be some reason why people would want those books, but I can't imagine any seller selling over 4,000 items in a month is not going through every book they get. That's a lot of books. And that's not just like they have 4,000 listings only. They probably have 10, 20, 30, 40,000 books maybe listed with FBA because you, you don't just get every one of them selling when you send them in. They may take months or even a year or more. So let's look at the actual calculation. If you were to buy this particular lot and you're getting an average sale of $5.44. This is using Amazon's own calculator and you need to keep in mind that there are fees being raised on these things. So this is not, this is the current price, but it's actually going to go up. So it'd be more expenses. But you got $5.44 sale. Now I'm considering Amazon FBA where you ship it into Amazon, not Merchant Fulfilling, because Merchant Fulfilling, you're going to make almost no money with that either, even less money. Uh, there may be a little bit of money in the shipping you can make, but we're talking about very little money, not worth your time, my friends. So we got $5.44. The fees are $2.17. Really, it'd be a little bit more than that, but we'll just stick with this lower number for the purpose of this illustration. Fulfillment by Amazon fees, $2.92. I put a really low ship to Amazon cost of five cents per book because it probably costs you a little bit more than that, but it may not. So five cents is reasonable because it's pretty low. I'm trying to go low on these things because I don't want, I don't want to look like I inflated the numbers to make it look worse than it really is. I'm making it look better than it is and it's still terrible. And the cost of product, I did 50 cents. Now remember, if there's 600 to 800 books in this and after shipping fees and and the cost of the books it's going to cost you about six to eight hundred dollars then you have really more like 75 cents to a dollar cost per book but i'm doing 50 cents i'm doing even lower than that and with all that being said everything being best case scenario it still comes out to negative 20 cents per item so let's go back to that chart again if you have 4148 sales in a month and you're losing 20 cents a sale. And that's your best case scenario. That's not worst case, that's best case scenario. Then your total, you see that 22,000 number and people think, oh, that's wow, that's a lot. Well, it's really not, not in the sales and especially when you're losing money on those sales, but your total loss for the month, if you had this exact scenario right here and those numbers and everything were the same. So for all the work, of listing, prepping, sending in 4,148 books, which like I said, you would send in a lot more than that because 
you're not going to sell every single book you send in. So to get 4,000 sales in a month, you may have to send in 10 or 20,000 items, especially with books, because they, some of them tend to be a little bit slower moving. And of course, it just depends. But books selling for $5.44 probably are a little slower books. But this would be your best case scenario. You would lose $829.60 a month for all that work. And we're not even counting anything else like your packaging materials, your, your tape, your packing paper, your labels. Presuming you're not having Amazon put the FBA labels on there because if Amazon's doing it, and that's another 20 cents an item you're losing because they charge 20 cents per item at this point. They may even charge more in the future. So this is a huge mon monumental loss and we're also not counting labor cost. If you're shipping in 10, 15,000 books, you are going to have to have someone working with you. And if it's just you and your spouse or you and your kids, well, you got everybody's time tied up in this losing proposition. Now, my friends, you can make money selling used books if you want to, whatever. Use anything on Amazon or eBay. But this is a losing scenario. All you got to do is think about this. I don't really think about this particular seller, but if they were making any money on this $22,000 in sales in a month, why would they be wasting their time with $250 or $300 Gaylord of books selling them on eBay? It's a hassle because the reality is this is probably a losing scenario or barely making money. If you're, if you were doing merchant fulfilled and you were getting a little bit of profit off of the shipping, then maybe you make a thousand, two thousand dollars a month, maybe three thousand a month doing this. But that's probably not realistic because of the other fees and costs like the tape and the packaging materials and your labor costs. You're gonna have to hire somebody. This is a lot of work. Now I'm not saying it is to discourage anybody. I'm just telling you, you have to put in the hard work. There's not gonna be just free inventory laying out there. And if it looks like it's, especially if it's advertised, FBA ready. Why is it FBA ready? If you can make any money with FBA, with this, this wholesale lot of items people are selling, why are they not sending it in Amazon? Why are they not selling it? And if they have these excuses, well, we sell in bulk only. Really? Because this is an FBA seller selling books, and yet they sold 4,000 books in one month. So they're obviously an FBA seller. So why would they be giving you good inventory at a low price when they are FBA sellers themselves selling thousands and thousands of books for little to no profit? My friends, this is not a good scenario. What you need to do is, especially when you're getting started, go out there, go to thrift stores, go to bookstores, go to book sales, and get out there and do the hard work. Now you don't have to do books. I'm just talking about books in this particular scenario because this is what was asked of me. But any kind of item, you need to get out there and learn the products, learn what they sell for, learn what is popular, learn what's not popular. I see so many people go, I've seen that book. And they're going and they scan all these useless, worthless books that won't make them a penny. And I can go in there and in five minutes have hundred, two hundred, three hundred dollars worth of profit in items and they're finding nothing because they haven't spent the time researching and going through these things and scanning everything until you find stuff and realizing patterns and scenarios and things that don't work, books that are good, products that are good. There are certain products, for example, in books, the books that are probably the most popular that you know the authors that are very famous, well-known books probably aren't selling very well. Now they may sell, but the profit is gone. They're, they're penny books. A real simple tip is look for interesting things, sometimes textbooks, sometimes unique sewing books and things that are just a little bit out of the norm. So they may not be something everybody is buying, but those things tend to have a lower publication amount and they tend to sell pretty well. And for larger amounts. This $5.44 average sale per item is terrible. That's a lot of work to make no money, to lose money, and even if you were making money, it's, it's a lot of work to make very little money. 
So my friends, what you really need to do, instead of jumping into buying Gaylords of books, you have no, no idea what you're doing. Because if anyone knew what they were doing, they would look at this chart here, see these sales numbers and say, wait, I don't want that. This is what they're promoting as if this is something good. Buy our books, look at this. So the only people that would be buying this are people who don't know the numbers. And most likely there's going to be new people. Now my friends, I know you don't want to hear this, but you need to go out and do the hard work. Get out there and do the labor. Go to book sales, go to library sales, go to thrift stores, do whatever. You don't do any of that, but that's better than just buying gay lords of stuff. You get a bunch of junk and call and books that are trash, covers ripped off, spills on them, used acceptable at best. You don't need that kind of stuff. When you get started, you just need to learn your craft. If you're selling books, learn about books. Learn about which books sell well, which books don't. If you sell toys, learn about toys. If you sell plush items, learn about those. If you sell video games, learn about those. If you sell board games, learn about those. You can learn about all this stuff, but just going and buying some bulk lot because it sounds good and says FBA ready is a bad scenario. Maybe this lot would be great. Maybe this would be perfect for you. But if you don't even know enough to run the numbers, probably need to start off something a little smaller, going one by one, picking out profitable books, and that way you can start earning some more profit. Then as you make profit, then you can invest in some of these bigger lots take a little more chance in those kind of things and see how it goes. But this shouldn't be your your initial point entering into selling books is to buy a huge lot of books that you know nothing about that the best case scenario is losing $829 a month. This is not a good idea. So my friends, I hope this has been a blessing for you. May God bless you richly.